birthday. for her birthday. Yeah. But she's, you know, the kind of person that would, that would absolutely go out clubbing. She just, you know, turned 21 a few months back, so I will be taking her out with me and getting her fucked up at the club and just let her enjoy everything there is to my world. So who do you look up to in the gay culture? Look up to? Like idolize. Um, Harvey Milk, obviously, was just I mean, the founder of the neighborhood, I think. I mean, gays are always around. We've been around for centuries, but until you get a voice that speaks out in lieu of a group of people, it's not really easy to say, oh, well, there was this, there was that. He fought for our rights. Um, he was amazingly vocal, mm -hmm. and he advocated our acceptance, and what happened to him was depressing. It set us back, just like it set back the black movie with Martin Luther King being assassinated. There's always something. Um, but as far as regular run of the mill people go, anybody who's open with knowing what they are, I can look up to. Anybody who's proud of what they've done and where they've been, I can definitely look up to. It's those who shadow it, they don't talk about it because they just, you know, they're ashamed. I have absolutely no respect for it and won't even waste my time on getting to know. So regarding that matter, have you heard the gay kid named Matthew Shepard? Uh huh. So I think every every gay guy should know who that is. I'm not quite clear on what's the story behind that. Is it, he he got, was beaten up for being gay. That's it. Yeah, it was an ignorant rural town, and it were it was people who were raised with ignorant beliefs, uh -huh. who weren't open or accepting, and they beat and killed him for being gay. For being gay. Yeah. So, bottom line, I mean, you can sugarcoat it any way you want. You can talk for hours on it. Mm -hmm. He was killed for being gay. So, um, in the, I haven't really got a, a clue on what his background is. So, I saw the book. He looks. You wouldn't think. I, I'm not stereotyping, but you wouldn't think just by looking at him that he was gay, because he, he doesn't show it as. Like, oh, see, I think he did look at. He was. I think yeah. I think he absolutely looked gay, and I think there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. um, and saying somebody looks gay is saying only that they fit stereotypically what people believe gay people look like. Either they're effeminate or they're soft-spoken, their features, what have you. Um, but I, yeah, I, I would have guessed he was gay. So what is your opinion about metrosexuality? You know, I, I dig it. Um, I know a few metrosexuals. I kind of think a lot of them have homosexual tendencies, but I also think it's cool that there, there seems to be black and white, that either you're straight and you can't dress, or you're gay and you have all the fashion sense in the world. Metrosexuals are supposed to be straight men with fashion sense. I embrace the idea, I really, really like it. I don't know how much validity there is to it, because I've known a few metrosexual guys who, you know, you end up fucking. Um, but I, I like the idea of the street man being open now and not so hung up on his masculinity that he can't like a designer. Or like if his hair is really, really neat or, you know, color his hair if he's, if he's gray or, you know, buy his Ferragamo shoes or, you know, his, carry his Gucci bag. It's fashion. Fashion is for the masses, but it's typically women and gays that do it. So Metro's kind of bridged the gap a little bit. A very good bit. In the gay industry, um, adult industry-wise, which gay porn actor do you really, really like? I don't have one. You don't have one? No. Um, I never watched much porn, even when I was doing it, especially when I was doing it. Um, so I don't have anybody that I would be like, oh my god, I'd love to work with this person. Oh my god, he's so hot. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's... I've never looked at him in that in that respect. Cause it because like I said, it, it was very much a job. It was a mechanical job. So it wasn't it wasn't that I was hoping to get to work with this person or that I would get to be cast in a film with this one. Like there was never a desire to want to be with a certain you know, like when I was working for um, for factory, I eventually worked in the office as the web media manager. So I was editing films and making trailers and putting them up online and taking them to the website. So we'd have models that come in that I'm like, no, I'm gonna suck his dick. And whether it was on film or not, I got to. Because I'm young, I'm attractive, I'm in the industry, and I work for the company. Mm. So, in that sense, yeah, there's always easy access to hot guys. But I can do that in Badlands. I can go to Badlands and take home somebody every hour if I wanted to. True. It just depends on how selective I want to be with. But how would you know if that guy would bottom for you? How would you know he's not another top? 
top or not, they like getting their decks out. Or, you know, they like playing. They like, you know, it's, it's, you go for a type. Um, I'm a rice queen, typically. So, most Asian guys are tops. And those that are, I would let top in a heartbeat. I think it's hard to be top by an Asian guy. And it's one of the only times I'll actually get top just by an Asian guy. Except for the threesome. Because, well, it's a threesome. It's a whole different set of rules. But. <laughs> what is the rules of threesome? I never really understand. You fucking get fucked. Oh, okay. If you've got a hole, use it. If you've got a dig, use it. <laughs> so, um... What do you call this? How do you like it so far? The course you're taking, is it hard or is it... Hard to, what do you mean? Hard to understand, like a lot of memorization or practicality. Is it more practicality or more memorization book wise? Wait, I'm sorry, I, didn't, I couldn't hear you. Of what? Uh, let's say some of the courses, like let's say in the course I took, phlebotomy, you have to memorize a lot of medical terms. Uh -huh. The course you're taking right now, is it much more like, you know, easy to understand? Um, it's practical. It's, it's very little book work, it's all, it's all practical, so you're constantly doing it. I learn by doing it, by physically actively doing So I work with my hands and color and cutting and the chemical processes. And it's just, it's, it's very, very much a hands-on process. Oh. And the fact that I've been coloring and cutting hair since the sixth grade. I've had every color, every link, every style that you could even imagine. From weaves to braids to buzz cuts to white, black, orange, brown, green, yellow, red, mm -hmm. everything in the middle. Amazing. Of different hair. So, so if people would, let's say, uh, after this being published, this film being published, and you would like to advertise your skills to certain companies like hair companies in LA or in this area, what would you like to say to make you convince them to get you as a stylist? Um, I believe that people are born with an innate sense of flair mm -hmm. and style. I think precision and skill can be taught, but if you aren't born with the, with the flair, you can't do it. Mm -hmm. Being a hairdresser or something, you, you need to be stylistic in. And I think meeting me once, having a conversation with me once, I think it's proof enough that I have the style and the flair. I've been taught the precision, mm -hmm. and I know it from doing it for years. Mm -hmm. And a lot of getting into a salon is saying, look, let me show you what I can do. So you have a portfolio of cuts and colors that you've accomplished. But physically being in front of somebody going, this is my model, this is what I can do, showing them it, that's, I think, your, your foot in the door. Mm. It's them watching your skill, your style, your section, your, your arm angles, where you position your body, how long it takes you, your accuracy. Did it, does it come out looking the way you said it was going to? Those are things you can show physically, but not really explain to somebody. Mm. In the long run, are you going to adopt kids or kids are not for you? Um, I would like to have my own biological kids. Mm -hmm. um, if it came down to it, I would definitely adopt. I think there are enough kids in the country that just don't have solid families that need them. And I'd be absolutely okay with it. Mm. Growing up, I always wanted identical twin boys. That would be the coolest thing in the world. My brother and I are not twins, but we were raised as such. So we had the same outfits, but different colors. Same bed, but different colors. Same bikes, but different colors. So we were raised as twins. Um, and I kind of like that, but I would rather have identical twin boys mm -hmm. that I could raise, you know, my sons that look alike, but then give them the opportunities to explore what they want in music or arts or academia and let them kind of flourish and become mentally their own people, mm -hmm. but still have those two people that you helped create that physically are identical from their fingerprints to their hair to their eyes, mm -hmm. but inside are completely different abstract people. So I would like kids. I'm not object to, um, I'm not object to adopting, it's just, I'm certainly not there yet. Mm. So what is your take about um, some gay kill, uh, in the gay culture, gay culture, uh, what is your intake about gay guys who are butch hating on gay guys who are femme? Um, I think it's, it's ignorant, you know, I don't like guys who feel the need to pretend to be straight or get that, the straight acting, but I would never hate somebody for it, it just, it doesn't make sense. Um, and I think it, it just adds to the segregation. As a community, we should be unified. Mm -hmm. as, a, as a gay community, lesbian, transgender, bisexual, we should be unified in what we're fighting for. And I think creating these subcultures of femme and butch and, and you know, transgender, lesbian, it just it puts us in little subgroups. And then they start fighting amongst themselves. And when it comes time for like things like Prop 8, when we need the unity, we don't have it. So I think, I think it's ignorant of them. And I've, I've met a lot of guys who are like, I've seen a lot of pro like on Adam Brad, and they say, fems, click next. If you're girly, I don't want to talk to you. 
a gay is a gay. If you don't want to make friends, then just say I'm not looking for friends. True. If you have a preference, then state your preference, but don't state the things you hate that just alienate people. Mm -hmm. It's it's ignorance. So besides the Adam for Adam, if you're if you are going to recommend a social site for gay guys that are not looking to hook up, which social site would you recommend? Um, you know, I don't really know of one yet. You know, I'm on Recon, I'm on Adam for Adam, um, I belong to Pop Zone because I'm part of the leather community. Mm -hmm. You know, I've got Grinder on my iPhone, and I've met a few guys off that, really, really nice guys. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I think you just need to keep looking for what you're looking for. My Adam for Adam doesn't say anything about sex, it doesn't say anything about one of my dick sex. It says I want to find somebody that I can, you know, love eventually, that I, I want to be loved, and that that's what I'm looking for, but I don't know that there's any social networking site that um, advocates